Hello, Soul Igniters and Igniting Relationships. How are you guys doing? I am so excited to just share with you what has been happening. There are a lot of updates. There are a lot of things that we are about to do because February is love month. And usually the world is saying, hey, this is what we need. It is the most Aside from Mother's Day, it is the most watched day. The most uh, chocolate is bought on that day. That sweet tooth, you know, giving your honey boo boo, the plush animals, all that stuff. And then when you don't get one, you feel rejected or feel like, you know what, that's just all crazy and all that stuff. But what if, what if we could prepare ourselves? for that month, that whole month of love, of unconditional, non-judgmental love. And if it starts with day one of us giving ourselves exactly what we need, then that is what we can do. So these are the three updates I want to make you guys aware. Next January, excuse me, next week, January 27th, 28th, and 29th, it's prepare your heart challenge. Prepare your heart. Even if you are in a relationship or you are single, whatever the case is, prepare your heart so that in February you can explode with excitement, with love, with joy, with peace, with ex with everything that you can possibly desire. February 5th, we have somebody who's going to be chatting with us and it is going to be remember love from your gut. So if anybody knows anything about the stomach and the mind and the heart and how it all works together, remember love from your gut. That is February 5th. We're going to be doing some goodies, talking about love and what that really means. I am going to share later on in the group the invitation so that you can uh, join us for that. February 9th to 11th is Unveil Your Soulmate. Yay! Unveil Your Soulmate. So what does that look like? Because yesterday when I was talking to a client last night, she wanted to know if I had met Casey at a Tony Robbins event uh, three years ago, three and a half years ago. And I said, I met his soul there. I met the one that I really had not seen because before that we were married for eight years and I hadn't known him. I hadn't realized him. I had it. Excuse me. That is my son who has wonderful news, but I will not share that right now. Um, so anyway, so I did not meet physically Casey at a Tony Robbins event. I met the person that I wanted to know more. So February 9th to 11th, it's it's going to be unveil your soulmate and that's going to prepare us for two things number one it's going to prepare us for february 14th so that we do not feel like we are left behind so that we do not feel like we are not getting the love or the soulmate or the kind or the attention that we are looking for because truly and honestly guys we all deserve to be loved and love the way that we want to be loved the other reason we are preparing you guys is because February 21st is our 11th year wedding anniversary. So we are preparing ourselves too so that we can have the best 11th year anniversary ever. So we are excited about that. So those are the challenges that are coming up January 27th to 29th, Prep My Heart Challenge. That's next week. Uh, February 5th is Remember Love from your gut, February 9th to 11th is Unveil Your Soulmate. So I am so excited about all those challenges. And we're going to be talking more about not just for single people, but for people that are in a relationship. Because truly what I realized is that it wasn't, oh, now I got a man, now I have a boyfriend, now I have a husband, now I have all these things. But we are continuously hearing on our sales calls and on some coaching calls, well, I don't have time. 
I don't have time because of my business. I'm busy, busy, busy to either look for love or to really give her or him the attention that they are looking for. And so my challenge would be that that is what got Casey and I further apart from each other. He, I don't know if anybody has seen Casey's post lately, but that is the body that he worked his tush for. And he was working out religiously and he would focus on his body, focus on working out, focus on, he was so busy on that and his own achievements as I was busy, busy on being a principal of a school. And so what I realized is that when I was taken down by a student, the same student that I was helping, the same student that had come down there with her sister from New Jersey, the same place where I was from. So I knew her, I felt her who took me down and the ambulance had to come that man that I did not realize or knew or understood for seven years beat the ambulance to come find me, to come be with me. And at that point, I realized that the reason I was on my back and I couldn't do anything and I couldn't go to work, my incessant work for 80 hours is because I physically was taken down and I needed to rest. So today we are actually doing a mindful meditation and I want you guys to get into the state of excitement. And before we get into the meditation where we are thoughtful, where we are conscious, where we are breathing in the life, the love, the, 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 the relationship that we are looking for, I want you to expand your wings. And today we're not going to take that long. It's not even going to be five minutes, but we're going to expand our wings right now. When you do this, you are actually physically opening up the chest cavity. You are opening up your heart. Your heart never stops beating until you are out of here. Your heart is the one that brings in all the love. Even though you want to punch somebody in the face, even though you are mad at what they did or they rejected you or they, or they failed you at something, your heart never stops loving. And if there is some sort of pain, some sort of rejection, some sort of reason as to why you don't want to even look at this person in the face, then extend yourself, go to the bathroom if you have to, and extend that heart so that heart can show up for you before that mind can try to contradict and say, well, you don't understand. They did me wrong. You don't understand. He shoulda, coulda, woulda, or whatever that is. So again, extend yourself. Take a deep breath into your belly as you're extending. And right now, I want you to think of that one thing, that one person, that one event that brings a smile to your face. If that means that you're thinking of something sexy, if that means that you're thinking of your husband, of your wife, of your child, of your pit bull, of the birds, whatever it is that will draw a smile to your face, I want you to think of that right now. That unconditional, non-judgmental love that you are giving to this other person, to this other thing, Focus on that feeling and your shoulders are back and your arms are open. They could be on your lap or they could be on your chair, wherever you are at. You're going to close your eyes. Your feet are flat firmly on the floor. You're going to take a deep breath all the way into your belly and release any tension, any anxiety, anything that might be going on right now, if you are on the live or on the replay, whatever that looks like, take a moment for you. This will be three minutes of joy, three minutes of conscious love for yourself, for your life, for the day, for the moment. Think of now as you enjoy this very moment. So we're going to take breaths of three. 
You're going to breathe in one, two, three, hold it for one, two, three, release for one, two, three, and continue to do that with your back straight. And if you feel like sneezing, we'll talk about that in a moment. Think of the air going in through your nose, out through your mouth. Think of the waves or maybe a trail that you like to walk on. Think of a newborn baby who comes into this world. Think of how your life means something. The desires, the passions, the peace, the poise, the man, the woman, the sex, the communication, what you are looking for is right there with you searching for you as well to embrace. You have 30 more seconds. As I hear my pup panting and breathing, take one last deep breath all the way into your belly. Roll your arms back. Almost like you are holding and appreciating all the love that is to you. So today, when we went to do the ultrasound, we are about six months already. And the woman that was doing it is actually the doctor. She is the one that um, gets to uh, read all the sonograms. So her knowledge is really, really high, right? Um, usually the technician is the one that is taking the pictures. She's rolling on my belly. She's looking for the baby. She's talking to me throughout the uh, what is happening. And so... But this time it was the doctor and I asked, I was like, does that mean that something is wrong? And she said, no, nothing is wrong. What I want to do is I want to learn how to do this too. And so as I'm sitting there, she is jabbing in that, um, I don't even know what it's called. I'm not up there with that knowledge, but that for the sonogram, she is like jabbing it and pushing and as she is pushing, it's actually hurting. Not only that, she was down there in my belly area, like towards the private area. And I could see the baby, could see like the little things that she wanted to see. But as she was pushing on that, the baby was up here and he was kicking. And she was shocked because or at least that's what she sounded like because she said, wow, he is extended. Like his legs were completely extended. I said, what I think is happening is the more you are pushing against him, the more is he is pushing against uh, my stomach and it was hurting. It was really painful as she was pushing. 
and trying to get her information, trying to get the stuff. She barely spoke unless I asked her a question, unless I said that really hurts. And what I realized is that the reason that I spoke up is two things. Number one is because this woman has never touched my belly before. And number two, I did not want her, the pain that I was feeling for the baby to be feeling this because if he's kicking and moving and, and going against what she's trying to do, then I wanted to make sure that everything was fine. So eventually the technician did come in. The minute the technician came in, she took the little, whatever it is, if you know what it is, put it down in the comments and started looking, but she wasn't pushing up against the lower part. She went straight up to where I told her where the baby is, where I feel it the most. And then I started seeing clear pictures. And instantly she says, the baby is doing fine. The baby's doing great. He is, and started calling this baby by its name or its sex or whatever it is um, that was in there. I started having a human conversation with her. She wasn't pushing as hard. She was still pushing, but she wasn't pushing at hard. But she was connecting to me on a human level. The doctor stood next to her and said, I couldn't get whatever it was. She wanted a, a number from either the stomach or whatever it is. And instantly the woman knew where to find it, how to do it, how to push exactly where it was. The moral of this story is that when we are looking for love, when we are looking for business, when we are, when we are searching for something, right? Because our knowledge is, our knowledge says, I've got a master's degree. I've got a this degree. I've got a whole thing full of stuff that I need to sell. Like all this knowledge up here. Remember the relationships that you actually want to incorporate in anything that you do. So because when we push against with all that information, all that knowledge, I know it's in here. I know if I push against this, I know if I do this, I'm going to get the input or the export that I want. But it's not then that we find it. It is only when we are capable of sitting there in a moment's notice and our relationship is more open to what is happening in the now moment instead of the expectation of a relationship, the expectation of a man or a woman, or my wife is uh, not giving me sex or my husband doesn't want to communicate with me. So how can I give him sex? The out information, the information that we need on the outside is important, but it's not going to be received or perceived as what you want until you have that relationship, until you ignite the relationship first with yourself, with what it is that you need to become in order to have what it is that you want. Let me know with a number one Drop it in the comments if you understand what I am saying. If you are wanting something so bad and the essence of missing it or not having it is stronger than the essence of who you already are, then you're going to miss the signs. You're going to miss the actual baby, the actual events, the actual movements, the actual stuff that is happening right then and there. That is what came up to me. In my pain, I allowed it to happen. I spoke up gently. I made sure that he was seen and heard. And as I was there, Casey was holding my hand and I squeezed at him when I was in pain and he would rub my hand and he would know that he wanted to let me know that he was there, that he was right there with me. So, Three amazing things are happening. Next Wednesday, I believe, the 27th, 28th, and 29th, is we are preparing my heart challenge. We are preparing it so that we are ready for all the stuff that is there for you already because what you search for searches for you, baby. In February 5th, we are remember the love starting in your gut. 
What is it that we actually are searching for when we feel hungry or when we want a desire when we want, or we're eating too much salt or maybe too much sugar or something like that? What does that all mean to our love life? What does that mean to ourselves? What does that mean? What is it that we're doing to our bodies? February 9th to 11th is unveil your soulmate. Unveiling your soulmate doesn't mean you don't have him or her. It just means you're going to be able to see them closer. You're going to be able to see them even more clear. It's almost like taking Visine and squeezing it in your eyes and all of a sudden, bling, you see it. You see it with a different light, with a different um, texture, with a different clarity. So those are the three challenges coming up. I'm so excited. Oh, the last thing is we're going to have a financial trio, financial trio that's going to help us love more, have a better relationship with money so that we are able to, in every part of our lives, right? The love, the relationships with money, with food, with our soulmate, with ourselves, that we're able to give more of ourselves from that space of abundance, from that space of already having enough, because there is so much data, so much evidence, scientific and religious, from the Tao, from the Bible, that talks about seeking first what we already have and being in enjoyment of what we already have, realizing that we are the resourceful beings, that no matter what politics, what person, what religion, what society, what education says, we have everything we desire already. So I'm looking forward to just hearing about all these breakthroughs regarding relationships and that you can ignite your relationship in and through anything. Pandemics, you have nothing on us anymore. I love you guys so much. Looking forward to seeing you on the flip side. Cheyenne, I'm glad that you have been with us. And let us know if you have any questions, any comments, or any other types of information about relationships that you would like to know. Take care. Have a good day and see you on the love side.